Hi, in this series of videos we're going to be looking at GCSE Maths Walkthrough. Each of the playlists is going to be about four or five videos. Each video will be about 20 minutes long. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. If you do need any help, please add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Hi, in this playlist we're going to be looking at the AQA Higher Tier and it's the Paper 2 from June 2018. So, as I mentioned in the intro, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions. Okay, so on to question number one and it says here is a circle. And what we're being asked to do is circle a word that describes the shaded part. OK, well, that's actually the segment of a circle. So if you circle that, you're going to get one mark for it. And then it says uh, in question number two, circle the number which is in standard form. Well, standard form is where the first number is between one and nine. And the index tells us, in this particular case, the amount of decimal places that we've moved from the six. OK, so it would be this one here. It's always the first number is between one and nine. OK, let's have a look then at question number three and question number three. A um, bit of a tricky one, really. It says that y is one and a half times x, circle the ratio that is equivalent to y to x. OK, so what we mean is, is that we could write this as y to x and if it's one and a half times I can write that as 3 over 2 to 1 okay so 3 over 2 is the fractional equivalent of one and a half times now hopefully you'll be able to see that if I multiply both sides of the ratio by 2 I can lose this denominator so what I'm going to get is 3 to 2 and it's actually going to be this one here. OK, a little bit of a tricky one, I think. As is number 4, I guess, because we're not kind of used to thinking about percentages over and above 100%, but in this particular case, we're being asked to work out 40 as a percentage of 10. So 40 out of 10 multiplied by 100 and however you calculate that I know the way I would I would just simply knock off these two zeros divide top and bottom by 10 and I've got four times 100 which is 400 divided by one so my answer is going to be 400 so just a little bit more difficult with those sorts of questions let's move on then to question number five I'm going to try to aim for this video to be roughly about 20 minutes in length, something like that. But as I say, please do stop, have a go at each of these. Now, match each sequence to its description. One had already been done for you. OK, these are ones that you just kind of need to learn, really. Um, so an arithmetic progression is actually this one here and a geometric progression is this one here. Triangular numbers are the ones in the middle, OK, and the two at the bottom, well, these are cube numbers and these are square numbers. OK, now for all of that, you're actually going to get four marks, so it's well worthwhile maybe spending a bit of time just checking through your working on that for four marks on a question five is very good indeed. OK, so let's move on to question number six. It is a calculator paper, so you are able to use a calculator for each of these. Now, it's a little bit more challenging and it's only three marks. <laughs> OK, so um, table shows the information about the population of a city. OK, and it goes from that to that in a period of 10 years. OK, so from Liam claims that from that to that, the population of the city will increase by the same percentage. OK, and I works out all of this. So does the population of 540,000 
match his claim. You must show your working. Okay, now a little bit limited on the space on the video, but I'll do my best to give you as much space as I possibly can. So let's have a look at what happens between 2001 and 2011. Okay, let's have a look at the population percentage increase. So between 2001 to 2011 okay the percentage increase okay now the way i work out percentage increase is actually difference divided by original it's the way i remember it is difference in other words the difference between 2011 and 2001 divided by the original which is the 2001 number so the difference in this particular case is 60,000 and the original number was 420,000. Now I got that 60,000 by simply doing 480,000 take away 420,000. If I put that into a calculator, multiply by 100 to get my actual percentage, that's going to give me a percentage increase within those two years of 14.29%. Okay, let's have a look now at what happens between um, 2011 and 2021. Okay, so 2011 to 2021. Okay, so again, we're going to do difference of original. Okay, now if that is the case, then we're going to say the difference again is a further 60,000. Okay, and this time, however, the original is going to be 480,000, which is where we started from. So again, pop that into a calculator and we're going to get 12.5%. Okay, so in other words, the percentage increase will not be the same percentage because we're actually working from a different original number each time. So in this particular case, it's actually gone down uh, slightly. So the increase is not the same. OK. All right. So I hope that's been OK for you to be able to kind of work through and follow that. If you do remember difference over original, that's the way I tend to do it. But obviously, each to his own. It's absolutely no issue if you remember it a slightly different way. OK, let's have a look then at question number seven. Now, question number seven is one of those questions where we're given quite a bit of data on a table and we're asked to draw some conclusions from it. OK, so work out two different estimates for the probability of Ali hitting the target. OK, she throws, she's throwing a dart at a target. Well, let's have a look at what she did on Monday. OK, well, on Monday... She scored 15 hits, remember it's hitting the target, out of 20 throws. So in other words, she's pretty good on a Monday that three quarters of the time she actually achieved her target. Or if you prefer, 75% of the time, that's perfectly fine, no problem. OK, let's have a look then at what happens on a Wednesday. Well, Wednesday, um, she's not quite as good really, because on a Wednesday... She actually hits a target 17 out of 40 throws. So if I calculate that, that's actually going to give me 0.425, which is 42.5%. OK, so those are the two probabilities, which are the two estimates of the probability which I've been asked to calculate. You could have done Tuesday if you wanted, but as you can see, there isn't actually a great deal of difference between Monday and Tuesday, between Monday and Wednesdays, a little bit more. So what we're saying is, is we've got, um, I'll write it as percentage, 42.5% or 75% on the Wednesday and on the Monday. OK, and then it says in question or part B of the same question, which of the two answers is a better estimate? All right. Now, you do, you're going to get these sorts of one mark questions at the end of these kind of um, kind of exam questions. Uh, give a reason. 
Well, generally speaking, the reason is that actually it's Wednesday because it's a larger sample size. It's almost, well, in fact, it is double the amount of throws that she made on a Monday. OK, on a Wednesday, she's got 40 throws. So I would say that actually the 17 out of 40 or 42.5 percent is better. OK, and I'll just put a line in that says something like it's the larger of the two samples okay and that's perfectly fine and i would say uh 80 percent of the time it's usually down to something like either it's a larger sample or it's out of the data range or something like that okay so let's move on then we're on about 10 minutes of actual video time but hopefully you've had the opportunity to work through these and your time schedule now should be about 20 minutes hopefully so let's have a look then at question number eight okay and question number eight is you've got to read it really carefully okay very very carefully indeed because it says Theo starts with savings of 80 J starts with none each week from now this is the important thing from now. OK, so what we're saying is at the beginning, we've got Theo has got 18 pounds. And James has got zero. OK, so at the beginning and then how many weeks will it be before Theo and James have savings in the ratio of 15 to 8? So it's one of those uh, where you've just got to kind of work through this, really. So at the end of week one, well, Theo saved an additional £4.50. So he's got £22.50 and James has got £4. OK, and really all we've got to do is fairly tediously kind of work this through until we get to a point where we feel comfortable that we're getting close to a 15 to 8 ratio. Now, I happen to know that the answer to this particular question is the sixth week. So I'll just fill this in. OK, so fourth week is 36 and James has got uh, 16. Fifth week, uh, we've got £40.50. OK and james has got 20 okay sixth week here we go so on the sixth week we've got 45 to um 24. now it's one of those difficult questions where you've got to kind of stop at that point and say well actually 24 is a multiple of eight it's actually three times eight so what i can do is if i divide both sides by three I'm going to get 15 to 8, which is the question that they're asking me to do. So in this particular case, from now, and again, I will stress that from now, there's going to be six weeks before they have the money in the ratio of 15 to 8. OK, hope that's all right. Let's move on then to question number nine. Uh, question number nine. Um, We've got this kind of bounds thing. So it says the length of each side of a rectangular pentagon is 8.4 to 1 decimal plate. Complete the error interval. Now, if it's correct to one decimal place, what it means is the absolute minimum, the lower bound of 8.4 to 1 decimal place is actually 8.35. OK. Sorry about my eight there. OK, <laughs> but the upper bounds, the highest it can be is actually from a bounds point of view, 8.45, because it's the same um, difference between 8.4. If you imagine 8.4 in the middle, OK, it's the same difference between 8.4 and 8.35 as it is from 8.4 to 8.45. The only um, difference here is that it can be equal to 8.35 because we can round it up to 8.4. But it has to be less than 8.45 because if we round that, it's actually going to be 8.5.
Okay, so complete the error interval for the perimeter. Well, let's look at what we call the lower bound. Okay, the lower bound is going to be, bearing in mind it's a pentagon, so it's going to get five sides. If each of them is 8.35, it means we're going to get 41.75 as the absolute minimum it can be. OK, the maximum it can be would be 8.45 times 5 again, and that's going to be 42.25. But remember, it has to be less than that. OK, so it's less than 42.25 and greater or equal to 41 point seven five okay i hope that's all right for you um, bounds are very important actually we do use bounds um, an awful lot in engineering so it's well worthwhile getting to grips with that if you're planning on studying engineering or some science related course in the future okay let's have a look then at question number 10 now we're about 15 minutes in so i'm probably going to stop after this we'll see how the timing goes this one is going to take a little bit of time so uh, a container is a hemisphere of that so it's a bowl shape now it very helpfully gives us the volume of a sphere so a sphere is a whole ball shape okay a hemisphere is just half of that it's a bowl but what we are told is that it's got a radius of 30 centimeters okay and we need to use this information then to be able to work out in uh, the actual volume first so that's what i'm going to do okay and i'm going to say well let's start with the formula so the volume of the sphere if it was a whole sphere is going to be um four thirds pi and it's r cubed well it's the radius cubed okay if i put that all into a calculator what i'm actually going to get is going to be 3600 pi so that's going to be 3600 pi but don't forget that it's actually this is the volume as if it was a whole sphere but it's not it's a hemisphere, it's half of it. So what we've got to do is divide that amount by two. So it's going to be 3,600 over two, which is going to be 18,000 pi centimetres cubed is the volume of the hemisphere. OK, and then what it says is that it takes um, on well, sand fills the container at a rate of 4000 centimetres cubed per minute. So basically, if we divide that by 4000, this by 4000, that will tell us the amount of minutes it will take to actually fill the container. OK, so 18000 pi divided by 4,000. OK, well, if I calculate that, that's going to give us 9 over 2 pi, and that's going to be minutes. Now, again, work that out on your calculator. So that's going to be 14.13 minutes okay i appreciate pi you, you think that it's kind of got something to do with the um with the volume of the circle or the area of the circle or the radius uh, rather the perimeter um in this particular case what i've done is i've used the calculation for the volume but i've divided it by 4000 per minute OK, so it will give me the amount of minutes that I need. So in other words, yes, it will take just less than a quarter of an hour, less than a quarter, a quarter of an hour. All righty, so that's question number 10. It's probably not a bad point to stop at this particular time. And we'll start again with the next video from question number 11. Um, I hope it's been helpful to you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. And I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.